Hey there, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app. And today I'll be doing a ship with me video. I do these videos every week and I go day to day. I show the different items that I'm shipping out. I talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them and what my profit was. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items to share. And I'm sure that you can learn some items to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. So let's get started. The first item that sold is a belt. No big surprise if you've been watching my channel, I sell a ton of belts. This one sold quite quickly too. It is an extra wide belt and it is just by Jessica Simpson. Um, I don't know exactly when it's from, but it kind of has a Y2K look to it. I uh, paid up for this because I was out of town and I stopped at a thrift store and I didn't find very much, but I always like to pick up a couple of items when I'm out of town thrifting so that I can use a portion of the trip as a write-off. So I paid $10 for this, which normally I don't like to pay more than five dollars for a belt and typically I like to pay three or less but I thought this was a fun piece and I thought that I could still sell it and make a decent profit it did end up selling for $29 and I think it only took a couple of weeks one or two weeks to sell so uh, I think that that is a great turnaround so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $13.20 Nothing to write home about, but still a nice little profit. And for a quick flip, I am happy with that. The next item is this unique uh, kind of coil uh, wire bracelet. I can't remember what um, keywords I use, but it also has these rhinestones at the end. And this was something that I knew wouldn't be a big profit, but I just thought it was really pretty. And so I couldn't resist picking it up. It was only $2. That's one of the reasons that I picked it up. And with jewelry, uh, I don't mind if something takes a little while to sell or if it's not a huge profit because it is easy to list, ship, and store. So this ended up selling for $17, I think with discounted shipping. So after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $9.58. This did took, take a while to sell. I can't remember exactly how long, probably in the realm of a year. So maybe not the greatest uh, profit for something that took that long to sell, uh, but for a $2 investment, I am not going to complain at all. Usually I put uh, my jewelry items in boxes, but I am out of the ones that would be the right size for this. So I just wrapped it up real well in bubble wrap and added one of my thank you stickers. So the next item is a pretty great sale. This is a Adriana Papel beautiful tiered dress. And this is kind of, they called it T length, uh, midi or maxi, depending on your height. But it also has this really pretty um, metallic kind of thread detail. And this was a women's plus size 22. So there was a lot of things going for this. Why I picked it up, I thought it would be great to wear um, to a wedding as a guest or for a bridal shower or a baby shower or just in general. It just was a really beautifully made, nice quality piece. And I used a uh, Google lens to see if I could find more information and stock photos on this. And I found that it's, I don't know if current season is the right word, but it is still for sale on some websites. And it originally retailed for $350. So 
so it was a very expensive or quite expensive dress to begin with honestly i didn't realize that uh adriana papel stuff if i'm saying that right uh retailed for that much i thought it was more in the hundred to two hundred dollar range uh, but anyways, my good will have this price for $10, which is a little bit higher than they normally price dresses at. But because it had so many things going for it, I decided to pick it up anyways. I listed it for $79 less than a week ago, and I got an offer for $70. I accepted that right away. This was also in beautiful condition. Looked like it had only been worn once or tried on maybe. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $46. I think that is really a great flip, you know, quick and great profit. The next item that sold is this Eileen Fisher kind of duster open front cardigan. It kind of has a ribbed texture. And this is, I believe this is tensile. I don't see a tag on it, but, um, you know, the Eileen Fisher stuff is always made from nice quality, nice feeling fabrics. This took quite some time to sell, probably over a year. Uh, but it did end up selling for full price for $59, which I think is great. Eileen Fisher just does not sell very quickly for me. Uh, unless I have it priced really affordably or it's a really special you know, like cashmere or angora or special piece in general. But if I can get it for an affordable price, I will still pick it up. This I paid $6 for, which I don't really pay up for Eileen Fisher anymore just because it doesn't sell quickly. Uh, but because this sold for $59, that ended up still being a great uh, profit. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $41.20. So I will be back in a couple of days uh, with more stuff that sold because like I say, like I said, I go day to day and share the different items. Uh, not the greatest weekend after the week that I had last week, which was so amazing. I had so many great sales. Um, I'm hoping that uh, it picks back up this week, but you know, that's just how it is. It's up and down and I am happy to have the sales that I do. So don't go anywhere. I will be back with another clip uh, to share what's sold. I'll see you then. Hi there, it's a couple days later and I have some pretty exciting sales to share with you. I had some pretty great sales, two great sales on Cherish. So let's get started. The first item is this adorable vintage poodle statue. Now I picked this up for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's just really adorable. Number two, it was marked Italy. Uh, so it was made in Italy. And number three, it has this sort of spaghetti, uh, what they call spaghetti technique uh, detail to it. Isn't that just so adorable? Also, this was only $4 at my Goodwill. So I just could not pass it up. It does have a couple little chips and breaks to the spaghetti, but because of the texture, it's not really noticeable. So I picked it up anyways. This ended up selling for $129 plus a $9 packaging fee, which is in addition to the shipping fee that the buyer pays. So all in, uh, the total sales price was $138. I'm very excited and kind of surprised that it sold for that price um, because it had those couple of little chips. Sorry, there is a jet flying over and it's pretty loud. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but either way, I'm super loud. I'm very excited with this sale. So like I said, it sold for $138. I paid four. Cherish charges the 22% seller's fee. So after that fee and my cost of goods, that made my total profit $105.62. Yes, that is a home run. This um, was probably listed for two or three months, so it didn't take a super long time to sell. I'll go ahead and read you what my title said. Mid-century 1960s Italian spaghetti poodle dog, anthropomorphic statue, blue, white, ceramic, signed Italy. I'm not sure if I pronounced that anthropo 
anthropomorphic, sorry, uh, correctly, but that refers to animals or non-human figures that uh, have a human likeness. So anytime I have an animal or something that has an expressive feature features, facial features, I'll put that keyword in there. And people do search that out. So I think it helps in finding, in people finding pieces like this. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way so it doesn't get broken. Okay. And the next item that's sold is another great piece. This is a vintage uh, finish. <laughs> I'm stumbling with my words today. Vase from Finland. Uh, and this is by Itala, I think is how you pronounce it. I-I-T-T-A-L-A. And this ended up selling for $152 plus a $10 packaging fee. I had this listed a little bit higher, uh, but I, also, I always have a 10% trade discount, automatic trade discount um, on Cherish, which means that you can offer a 10% discount to registered interior designers or architects. Uh, I think other dealers can sign up for it, but they have to register with Cherish as a trade purchaser to be able to get that 10% off. So they took advantage of that 10% off, uh, but I did already, I also had that $10 packaging fee. And I do for sure know that this is a designer that purchased this because after they purchased it, they messaged me and asked if I could ship it quickly because it is for an installation that they are doing in the next couple of weeks. So this also had chips, a few different chips to the rim, but it's still sold for that great price. So don't always let that discourage you if an item is flawed. If it still looks good, oftentimes people will still buy it. Now, you know, collectors are a different story, uh, but designers and people who are just gonna set something in their home, a lot of times they don't care if it has chips on it. Okay, so like I said, this sold for $162. I paid $6 at an estate sale. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $122.58. Yes, another great profit. Okay, I'll go ahead and read you my uh, title. Now there is an, a designer or artist name in this title and I'm sure I'm going to butcher it, but Vintage Timo Sarah. Paneva, S-A-R-P-A-N-E-V-A, -E for Itala, Vertica Art Glass Large Vase. So I, I, I used Google Lens to look up what this particular uh, design was from Itala and who the designer was. Uh, because if people are searching out something specific, you want to have all of those keywords. I also put art glass in there and vintage, and it is a quite a large vase. So I was sure to put uh, the word large in there. So another really exciting sale on Cherish. Again, I'm gonna move this out of the way and get it packaged up later. But I am just very, very excited about both those sales. Honestly, when I picked both of those items up, I would not have guessed that I would get that amount for them. So that is very exciting. So the next item that sold, uh, all the other ones sold on Poshmark. And this uh, set sold to a lovely subscriber. So thank you so much, Michelle, for uh, shopping my closet and supporting my YouTube channel. I really, really appreciate it. It is this necklace and matching earrings. I picked these up because they kind of had a, a little bit of kind of a Southwest vibe to them. And it was just a pretty substantial piece. Plus it had both the necklace and earrings. And I do well with uh, this kind of, you know, statement Southwest style jewelry. So if I can find it for an affordable price, I will pick it up. This ended up paying or selling for $28 with discounted shipping. 
she liked it and my posher VA sent out an offer for 10% off with uh, $4.95 shipping and she accepted that. I think that is a uh, great price for both me and her. So I am very excited about that. I paid $3 for this set. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $17.38. Michelle, I really, really appreciate you shopping my closet. And I appreciate all of you when you shop with me and uh, support my channel. I'm going to add a little bit more bubble wrap to that before I package it up and put the ribbon on there. Oh, something that I, if you watched my previous videos, I mentioned that I was gonna order some stickers from that website, Temu, T-E-M-U, and I got them, they're very cheap, so I think it was like $2 for a thousand, or 500. So they're very cheap, but they're really tiny, as you can see. This one says, uh, thank you for your order. And this one says, thank you for supporting my small business. So a good price, uh, but they're pretty tiny. So I'll probably need to use multiple. So it may not actually be a better deal than ordering the bigger ones off Amazon. But I just ordered a couple things off that website because things are so cheap. And I wasn't sure what to, if, if they would be good or not. Oh, I also got this. Um, clearly it's a fake love bracelet, but it was only like $2 and 38 cents. So I was just like, I got to see what this is all about. And it's actually, I mean, not good quality per se, but it's kind of heavy and it's cute. So for a couple of bucks, uh, it's a fun little thing to pick up. Okay. So the next item that sold is this pair of Clark's espadrilles. And I picked these up for a couple of reasons, because they were in season, um, they're in pretty good condition, and also because they are a women's size um, 11. So I like to pick up larger sizes when I find them, just because sometimes it can be hard for women with larger shoe sizes to find cute shoes, because I think a lot of times the stores will only get one pair of the larger size, you know what I mean? One pair of 11s and one pair of 12s. And so um, I like to pick those up when they're in good condition. They don't always sell super quickly, uh, but inevitably they do sell. And these ended up selling for $39, which is actually a pretty great price for Clark's. Even though Clark's have a pretty good retail, um, I don't typically get that great of prices, resale prices for them. So I am happy with uh, $39. Oh, that one kind of had some gummy stuff on it. Uh, considering I only paid about $2 for them because they were from the bins. So after Posh Fees, and my cost of goods that made my profit $27.18. I think that's really great. Uh, let's see, which box do I want to put these in? Okay, and the next sale is kind of interesting. I picked these up uh, at Ross. And I don't typically do retail arbitrage, but sometimes if I see something that catches my eye when I'm at Ross or TJ Maxx, I'll pick it up and give it a try. So these are Pokemon print Levi's jeans. And so these were priced at $25 at Ross. But when I looked up comps, they had some really great comps. But these took, I don't know, eight months to a year to sell. And they ended up selling for $70. So I think maybe I just kind of missed the initial hype of the release of these, or maybe I had them priced too high. I initially had them priced at $129, and maybe that was too high because these were marked irregular. Also, they were marked 3232, but the inseam only measured... 30.5. So I'm pretty sure that's what the irregular 
was referring to. Either way, I am happy with the $70 that I got for these. The buyer made me an offer. Uh, like I said, I paid $25. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, I made $31. So I still more than doubled my money. Even though it took a little while to sell, uh, I still consider it a, a good sale and a good profit. So that is it for today, but I will be back in a couple of days to uh, share what else I sell. It's been an okay week. I'm hoping to have a few more higher dollar sales uh, to get me to that $1,000 in profit for the week uh, because that's always my goal. So I will uh, see you in a couple of days. Hi again, it's a couple days later and I've got a few things to ship out. It really hasn't been very busy, uh, but I was thinking about how slow it had been and kind of feeling sorry for myself. Uh, so I looked back at last year's sales and compared to this year, uh, I'm actually selling more this year than I did last year. So um, I think I'm just more hyper aware of it because I'm doing these videos and I really want them to be exciting for you guys. And for me, it's more exciting when I have, you know, really big high dollar sales. And the truth of the matter is that that doesn't always happen in this business. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes you have low dollar sales and you just have to ride the wave. So gonna try and focus on that, uh, that I'm actually selling more this year than I did last year and especially on Cherish, way, way more on Cherish. So those are good things and I'm gonna try and focus on the positive. Also, if I haven't mentioned it in this video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and it really helps me out when you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That'll notify you when I upload new videos. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I sold three belts over the last three days. Not a big surprise for you guys who watch my videos. The first belt that sold is just this uh, simple little brown leather belt by Fossil. It's a skinny belt. It's a little distressed, um, a cute little belt, but nothing really too, I mean, interesting about it. So I do sell, you know, I sell cool high-end belts and I also sell basic little belts like this. Now these basic belts don't typically get a great price. This one sold for $18, which I still think it's pretty great for a, you know, simple used belt. I had paid less than a dollar for this. I got it uh, at a fill the bag sale. And um, I mean, I probably only paid about 25 cents for it, but for math purposes, I'm just going to put my cost of goods as a dollar. So if you can find uh, belts for really cheap prices, even if they're just basic leather belts, I'd still go ahead and uh, pick them up because they will still sell, you know, for 15, 20 ish dollars. So after fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $13.40. That's great for a not very big investment. That did take a little while to sell, but belts don't take up much room, so I don't really worry about that. Okay, the next belt that sold is this pretty cool uh, Justin kind of concho belt. This did not have the buckle with it, but it was in nice condition. And as I've said before, I will still pick up belts even if they don't have the buckle. They still sell. A lot of times people who are buying these Western belts have an award belt buckle or they like to you know put a fancier belt buckle on the belts so they don't care if there is no buckle now something happened with this sale that i kind of wanted to talk about and um i'm kind of testing it out i am not offering cancellations on items that buyers make offers on i used to if a buyer made an offer or bought outright or anything, if they requested to cancel before I shipped it, I would still cancel it for them. And my thought process with that was, 
that if they don't want it, I don't want to send it to them, which I still think is a good thought process. So if that's how you do it, go ahead and keep doing it. But after I found out that there is some sort of point scoring system with your closet, and if you cancel an order, even if the buyer has requested it, it can make your points go down, which in turn can affect your sales. So I have decided to experiment with not offering cancellations. It doesn't happen very, very often, but this is the second person that I've had requests to cancel after making an offer on an item in the last two weeks. So the first one, I didn't accept the cancellation. She got, it was for a purse. She got the purse and she opened up a case and uh, claimed that it was more worn than what I showed in the pictures. And sorry for the long story, but I think hopefully this is helpful for you guys if you're considering, you know, not offering cancellations. So she opened the, the case. I responded to uh, the case saying, with a uh, screenshot of my description saying, please see my description that said that this purse had general wear and additional wear and scuffs to the corners and handles. And I had pictures of the corners and the handles. I also said, please see above where the buyer requested to cancel this order after making a binding offer on it. Because when they open a case, it will show the messages that they've sent you automatically in the case. And Poshmark cited in my favor and they released my funds. So, you know, I, I do want to provide good customer service, but I also, this is a business for me, and I also do need to keep my sales moving on Poshmark. So I am trying to be very polite when I decline the cancellation for them, um, but I'm trying that out to see. So this buyer uh, asked me numerous questions, probably three or four questions. Uh, and, she, and she made an offer and I answered her questions and then I said, Are, do you still want to purchase the, the belt after I've answered your questions? And she said, yes. Are you okay with my offer? And I said, yes. I just wanted to check before I accepted it. And she said, okay, good. So then I accept her offer and like five minutes later, she asks if she can cancel it because she didn't check the measurements. Again, I declined to, I politely declined to cancel the offer. And I said, I'm really sorry. I don't offer cancellations. Uh, when you make an offer through Poshmark, it's binding. And um, if the belt doesn't work out for you, you're welcome to use my photos to reposh it. Thank you for understanding. And she, she did, she said, okay, I understand, whatever. So we'll see how this one goes. I'll kind of report back so I can kind of be the guinea pig and test for you guys to see if that's something that you want to do or not want to do, it's totally up to you. So that belt ended up selling for $27. I had paid three for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, it made my profit $18.60. Me not offering cancellations isn't about that sale or that dollar amount because $18.60 isn't a huge sale. It's how it affects the algorithm and how it affects my closet that I am taking into consideration. So we'll just have to see. Hopefully, you know, I don't regret it, but uh, I, I do like trying different things out to see what's the best way to you know, operate in those circumstances. If you guys wanna let me know what you guys do or what you think about that in the comments down below, I'm definitely interested in your feedback and what your experience is. And I think other people read the comments too so we can all learn from each other, which is one of the reasons that I have this channel. Okay, another belt. This is just a fun metal uh, kind of link belt, kind of has a Western vibe. Uh, I had this, I don't remember what I had this listed for, but the buyer started off by offering me 15 and I wasn't sure if I wanted to accept that or not. So I just kind of let it sit for a few hours to see if maybe someone else who had liked it would make me a higher offer. And the same buyer actually canceled the $15 offer and submitted a $20 offer 
which was more in line with what, with what I was hoping to get for this. So I went ahead and accepted that offer. I pick up these, you know, basic little chain belts when I find them. They seem to inevitably sell for me, even if it's, you know, only for $20, $25. You know me, I am happy with every bit uh, when I buy and sell belts. So I had paid $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $13. And I think this one did take a little while to sell too, uh, but that's okay. Again, they don't take up much space, so I am not going to complain about that at all. Okay, the next sale is a little bit better. It is this uh, Free People Beach. It's kind of, uh, it's supposed to be a beach cover-up. But it is, I mean, it's big and it's kind of sweatshirt material. It's kind of a midi length and a, a high low hem. Oh, here we go. Here's the tag. You guys are probably familiar with Free People Beach, but I just thought I'd share that. So I'm not big on picking up Free People anymore. It doesn't typically sell for very much for me or for very high prices. But they had this in the... Um, pajama section at Goodwill. So they only had it priced at $2.99. I think they thought it was a robe or something. So I thought, oh, for that price, I'll pick it up. And I did. It ended up selling for $68. The comps were pretty good on this. I, I think I just used Google Lens to try and um, find a stock photo, which was very important for this because it's just kind of oversized and floppy. So I really needed that stock photo to show how, you know, they thought it could be worn. I'm going to finish packaging this up off camera just because it's kind of getting all wadded up and I want it to look nice, but sold for $68. I think that is awesome. Like I said, I paid three. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $51.40. That's the kind of profit I like to have, but you know, they're not all like that. So the next item is this Harley Davidson uh, Henley shirt, and it has this great detail on the back. I used to do a lot better with Harley Davidson stuff. I think it was kind of trendy for a little while, uh, but it has definitely slowed down for me. So. I pretty much only pick up vintage Harley t-shirts or like leather jackets, more substantial pieces now because these just do not sell uh, very quickly for me anymore. And this ended up selling for $25, which is fine because I only paid a dollar for it. Uh, but for a while there, you could get a little bit higher prices for, you know, Harley shirts and sweaters and whatnot. So, but you know, if you can still pick it up at the bins, I think, I think it would be okay to do. It just, it's just kind of a slow seller for me now too. So that is up to you. If you want to, you know, sit on a piece for a little while for a $19 profit, which is what I ended up making on this, which is just, which is pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about that. Okay, so overall, I did not come close to meeting my weekly uh, profit goal this week, but like I said, when I looked back at last year, uh, I'm definitely doing better than I did, so that is a good thing. My total sales for this week was $770. My total cost of goods was $79. That's an excellent ratio. That's like 10 times my money, which is wonderful. Uh, and my total profit after my cost of goods and fees was $529.06. So we're just gonna go with the flow, focus on the positive and keep listing. Um, I am going to, like I said, keep trying to list more hard goods on Cherish because I am really getting great prices and making great profits on there. I'm also considering 
uh, cross-listing, maybe to Etsy, maybe to eBay, I'm not sure. And this video will come out a, a couple weeks later, um, but I am seeing that Poshmark is offering one month free of promoted listings and you can sign up through the website only. So I think I'm gonna try that. And as much as I don't want to pay for promoted listings, I think it's just part of the business now. Etsy charges for promoted listings, eBay charges. Um, on Cherish, you can actually promote your listings. I just don't. So I think it's just kind of the nature of this business now. And in the past, I have paid for services to share my closet. So I'm just going to look at it like that and set a budget for myself on how much I'm willing to pay for promoted listings and uh, just realize that it's part of this business now. It sucks. <laughs> I don't want to. I just want them to, you know, show my stuff to show up in the search function appropriately so people can find what they want. But we don't always get what we want, unfortunately. Uh, fingers crossed next week is a little bit better. I always like to have uh, exciting sales for, for me and for you guys. So um, I hope to see you next week. Thank you so much for watching.